Kareem Ali TV. You said you got a you got a political side, a spiritual side, and of course the yeah. The, the I think everybody does. I think everybody is like you know they aspect different parts of yeah. them. I, I just try not to pretend like I'm only one way or I'm right. above anything right. because the truth will always come out anyway, and I can't I can't lie to God. You know I mean, and perhaps I should present myself better or behave a little bit better, but I don't want to I don't want to be phony. Right. Like, cause a lot of people be phony. They be one way. Mm -hmm. Like Bill Cosby was one way for like you know oh, fifty that, years cool. and condemning other work. people. He was at work. He, he was, was work. condemning. I mean, he hated Richard Pryor. But Richard Pryor was actually real. He never lied about anything he did. He had issues. He coped with drugs. But Bill Cosby was trying to get everybody to be a particular way, this phony way. And all the time, he was in there um, uh, sliding the people's jello pudding cups. Richard Pryor did it to Paul Mooney. Ooh, okay. I'm sorry. Let me, let me, let me ask you this. When, when, when did you first feel... <laughs> I'm, I'm running that real light, though. When, when, when did you first feel like you were spiritually conscious? Like, when did you really start? Like, always, always. I remember, like, um, even when I was a kid, I would wonder about. I'm talking six or seven years old. I'd be sitting in the bathtub wondering about the Trinity mm. and how it didn't it didn't make sense to me. So you grew you grew up Christian. I grew up Christian. Okay. My, my my grandmother tried to make sure my grandmother on my mother's side, really both of them, mm -hmm. she tried to make sure that um. I had a Bible, a picture Bible, and stuff like that, and um, you know, so, so I, but I grew up thinking about it, having a belief kind of instilled in me. I went to Catholic school okay. for nine years, John Paul Regional Catholic School on Dogwood Road, as a matter of fact. Time. Yeah, I went there for nine years, and they were very racist hmm. um, on the low. A lot of stuff that um, that you know, I read years later happened to be there. Like it was this book called uh, The Conspiracy, the the. The uh, destroy black boys by the time they're in the fourth grade or something like that. Word. I noticed that from the kindergarten to third grade, everybody was friends. The white kids, the black kids, we were going to each other's birthday parties. Mm -hmm. By the fourth grade, there was a separation that had happened. It was as if their parents had told them they couldn't uh, associate with us anymore. Mm -hmm. So then you would start to see them start to segregate themselves from us. And then it became an um, a educational segregation because, you know, you can't, at the Brown versus the Board of Education, you can't segregate people anymore by race. Right. So they start segregating us by education. So you had the A group and the B group. And the A group was uh, the, the, the group with the accelerated kids. They were supposed right. to be a little smarter. And the B group were the kids that were slow to catch up. As time went on from the fourth grade to the eighth grade, you noticed that uh, it was mostly white kids in the A group mm. and mostly black kids in the B group. And they would label us as being like class towns or having... Um, uh, other types of issues that wouldn't allow us to learn. But if you tell a kid those things, that those things are powerful in your subconscious mind and you begin to act them out. If you call me a monster, I might become one. No, no doubt. And so you start to see those things um, play out literally in Catholic school. And then also, you're like, these people are supposed to be Christians? Mm. But, you know, a lot of things was just stuff that I just didn't agree with, like um, in Catholicism, like we would be out there praying to... Uh, the, the mother of Jesus, like the statue, the statue of Mary out there, and the rosary, and mm -hmm. I just didn't get it. It was stuff that was conflicting from stuff I was reading. Right, right, right. So that was like when I first, but six or seven years old, I was sitting, I would always wonder about it. Right. I always had a relationship with God, but I just didn't, I didn't know um, the path that I should take. And, you know, the way people were acting was kind of throwing me off, and it wasn't really so much about the people, it was actually about what is it that you believe, or what does God want us to believe about Him? I'm oh, sorry, I hit the table. Right right you know what I'm saying? Now, 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 you call conversion to Islam reversion. Oh, you, you saw that, didn't they? They, hey, look, we did the homework, yeah. man. Well, well, in, in Islam, we are taught that um, um, when you when you um become a Muslim, mm -hmm. you revert to Islam because Muslim is what you were anyway. If you take it from the definition of being purely monotheistic, where well, you're born, like every animal, every plant that's sentient, every uh, sentient meaning aware, every insect, they know about Allah. They know about the one who created them. Every baby, you're aware of that mm -hmm. on some level. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, the, the influences in your life that teach you other things that go to um, excesses in your religion or belief system to teach you to add things to worship alongside of God. Mm -hmm. Other than him alone. Right. And Islam is strictly monotheistic. It's the belief in one God and one creator of everything. Right. So that's why we say we reverted. We went back to that which we originally were. Okay. And, I, and, how, and how old were you when you, you know, made that choice? I was 17. 17. I was, so I was in high school. Word. Um, 
probably my, my just before my last year of high school. But I had thought about it for a while. I remember um, because of um, the things I dealt with at the Catholic school and the, and the racism, uh, it, it, it kind of hurt my confidence a little bit. My mother saw that, so she started to take me to the Nation of Islam mm. because she felt like I needed to be around positive black role models. Right, right. And so I was going down there, and you know, I, I, and a, maybe a year or two before, I just saw uh, Malcolm X, so I was very interested because mm. that movie was like probably the most impactful movie on me of all time. It might not have been totally accurate, but at the time, I was like, oh my God. I mean, I saw Do the Right Thing. I mm. saw another thing, you know, parents like, my mother always let me watch everything, and she watched it with me. Right. And she let it, and she uh, guided me to have the right messages going away. Like she took me to see New Jack City. We saw Juice. Right. We saw Boys in the Hood. Mm -hmm. But she would always say, "Hey, look, you're Trey. That's the guy you're gonna be." My friends are coming away talking about I'm Doughboy or I'm Bishop. Right. And that was the way that I thought not to be. Mm -hmm. I had one friend. He wanted to be um, what's the, what was his type play? Nino Brown. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be Nino Brown. He was and he ended up, and he he almost made it. I know a lot of. He wanted to be Nino Brown and Baltimore. You could do that in Baltimore. He almost made it. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I, but I always was attracted to the uh, the good guy anyway for some reason. I wasn't really in the mafia stuff. I like superhero stuff. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Look at my, my little boy wallet. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? It's a wallet. No, I mean, what is on it? That's it's Superman. Superman. Ah, and that's okay, Batman okay. on the back. Okay, okay, you know what okay. So, oh, yeah, we might be giving this to pop culture too, man. But, but, but,